Hi, my name is Paul Lewis and today I'm going to take you through Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws and how they can be applied to work out the voltage drops, the current flowing and the power dissipated in a circuit that contains two voltage sources and three resistors. To start with, we will look at Kirchhoff's voltage law, which is often abbreviated to KVL. And Kirchhoff's law states that the sum of voltage drops in the external circuit so we've got three voltage drops here will always equal the applied voltage we have an applied voltage of 12 volts and the voltage drops 2 volts, 4 volts and 6 volts is equal to 12 volts Kirchhoff's current law often abbreviated to KCL states that the sum of currents flowing into a junction is equal to the currents flowing out of that junction. Here we have a junction and we've got four currents. We've got I1 is equal to 2 amps, I2 is equal to 4 amps and I3 here is equal to 3 amps. IT in this branch is equal to 3 amps so effectively we have 6 amps flowing into the junction and we have 6 amps flowing out of the junction. The two laws together, KVL and KCL, can be used to calculate the voltage, current and power in a circuit that contains multiple voltage sources. We're going to look today at a circuit that contains two voltage sources. Here is the circuit we're going to be working on. We have two voltage sources, 10 volts and 5 volts. Each voltage source has an associated resistor, 5 ohms and 10 ohms, and we have a load resistor of 15 ohms. We label the circuit with I1 flowing into the junction and I2 flowing into the junction as well, so we get I1 plus I2, and those currents are caused by both voltages here and here. The direction of the currents is always drawn like this at first, but you will see later on that I2 and I1 do not necessarily both flow into the junction. Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us that the sum of external voltages always equals the applied voltage. Furthermore, Ohm's law tells us that voltage is equal to current times resistance. With this type of circuit it's very helpful to blank off one of the voltage sources like this. Then we can write the applied voltage is 10 volts and the voltage drops in the circuit must equal 10 volts. Remember, voltage is equal to current times resistance. We don't know the currents at the moment, but we have two labels for them, I1 and I2. So we can write 10 volts is equal to I1 times 5 that's the current flowing through this resistor here, plus I1 plus I2 times 15. We can then simplify that a little further, so we get 10 is equal to 20, that's 15 I1 plus 5 I1, 20 I1 plus 15 I2 and we put a little 1 in brackets next to that. We then carry out exactly the same operation with the other half of the circuit. We pretend that the left hand side of the circuit is not there and we do the same thing with this voltage drop here. 5 
is equal to 10i2 plus, once again, 15i1 plus i2. And once again, we simplify. 5 is equal to 25i2 plus 15i1. And in brackets, we put a 2. At this point, we've arrived at a simultaneous equation. The top term and the bottom term form a simultaneous equation. We can use the simultaneous equation to find the currents I2 and I1. I'm going to take the top term and multiply it by 3. 3 times 20 I1 is 60 I1 and 3 times 15 is plus 45 I2 is equal to 3 times 10, 30. That's the first term. The point of simultaneous equations is you try to make one of the terms on the left hand side equal for both the first and second equation. Taking the second equation we can make 15i1 equal 60i1 by multiplying it by 4. 60i1 plus 4 times 25i2 which is 100i2 and 4 times 5 is 20. We can now eliminate the term I1 by subtracting the bottom equation from the top. 60I1 minus 60I1 is 0. So I1 cancels out. 45I2 minus 100I2 is equal to minus 55I2. And 30 minus 20 is equal to 10. Therefore, I2, when you do this in your calculator, is equal to 10 divided by minus 55. The current I2 is equal to minus, got that the wrong way around, minus 0.1818 amps. We have worked out the current I2 and we can use that now to work out the current I1. I'll keep this page separate. We can take any of the two terms that contain I1 and I2 and use the value of I2 to determine the value of I1. Let's write at the top of the page again, I2 is equal to minus 0 0.1818. And we will take term 1 from our previous equation, 20I1 will give you minus 2.72 is equal to 10. We can further manipulate this equation by taking the minus 2.72 over to the other side. 20i1 equals 12.72. And with further manipulation, i1 equals 12.72 divided by 20. i1 equals 0. 0.636 amps. We can come back to our original drawing now and you'll notice I said that we draw in the directions I1 and I2 as if we have currents both flowing through the load resistor but we've just proved through Kirchhoff's law that actually I2 does not flow in this direction it flows in this direction in the minus direction and is equal to minus 0.1818. I1 flows in its original direction and is 0 
0.636 amps. Therefore, the current flowing through the load resistor, the 15 ohm load resistor, is equal to I1 plus I2. This current equals 0 0.4 5.4 amps. The 0 0.454 amps will cause a power dissipation. Remember power is equal to I squared R. Power is equal to 0 0.454 squared times 15 power is equal to 3.09 watts. Furthermore, the current will cause a voltage drop of V is equal to I times R of 6.81 volts. We can draw this 6.81 volts in our circuit here like so. We would also note that the current I1 will cause a voltage drop across the 5 ohm resistor. I1 times 5 equals 0.636 times 5 3.18 volts. We can label this voltage drop 3.18 volts like so. Recall Kirchhoff's law tells us that the sum of voltage drops in the external circuit equal the applied voltage. When you add 3.18 to 6.81 it pretty much comes to 10 volts so there's your proof. You can carry out a similar exercise for the other side of the circuit. You must remember, however, that the 5 volt supply here will not contribute any current to the external circuit. Well, that concludes our tutorial on Kirchhoff's current and voltage laws. I hope you found it helpful, and if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Bye-bye.